smooth idle, and tons of low-end torque. I choose this camshaft. But wait, this one has almost as much low-end torque, a little more horsepower, and a little higher RPM. Why is it so hard to pick a camshaft? <laughs> Greetings fellow DIYer and welcome to my video. So this is my seventh video in my 393 Windsor Stroker build. If you haven't seen the other videos in this series, make sure you check those out. So why is it so hard and so confusing to pick a camshaft? Well, there's a couple reasons for that. The first issue is RPMs and where that motor is designed to produce max torque and max horsepower. If you are wanting to maximize your torque and your low-end grunt in the engine, you are going to sacrifice overall horsepower. If you're wanting to maximize overall horsepower, it's going to come at the cost of low-end torque. The second issue is all of these specs for a camshaft are interrelated. With that in mind, changing one spec affects how the other spec is responding to the overall configuration of the motor. And those two things together are what make camshafts so confusing. If you're putting together a motor and you do a straw poll on your favorite forum or Facebook page and say, what camshaft should I put in it? You're gonna get so many different responses. The problem is a camshaft has everything to do with how the motor is intended to be used. And what's important to one person may not be important to someone else. For a lot of guys, horsepower is the magic number. For some guys, valve train reliability is most important. For others, it's all about low-end torque. And trying to pick one on your own can be extremely challenging. I made such a post on a Mustang forum that I'm a member of, and as expected, I got a different answer from each person. Several people agreed on what they thought would be best in the engine that I'm building. And what I ended up ultimately choosing is closer to the general consensus. The first bit of advice that I got was contact a cam manufacturer. Give them all your specs and let them pick your cam for you. And I did that. There is a national cam company that has a cam spec tool. You put in everything from the weight of the vehicle to RPM range, go fast parts. There's, it's a very exhaustive questionnaire that you fill out. And they put that information into their magic system and boom, they give you the cam. I made that request almost four months ago and it's a good thing I wasn't holding my breath because I am still waiting for a reply. So I thought, there are other cam companies. So I went online and found another reputable company that a lot of people have had success with. They too had an online camshaft request. Now they didn't ask all the questions that the first company did, but the nice thing is I'd already filled out the first one. So I was able to provide all that information to get an answer from them, still waiting. I understand they're busy. I understand they're probably short-staffed. But if you're going to offer an online tool to help people pick a camshaft, you need to staff it. If you don't have the manpower to use that system, then you need to take that system offline until you do have the manpower. It's very disappointing that two national companies couldn't bother to get back to me. So my original plan for this motor started back when I was just freshening up a 351 Windsor, not a full rebuild, just a freshen up. Wasn't even putting new rings in it because it had really good compression. So basically I was resealing it, putting a good set of heads on it and a performance intake, performance ignition system and headers. Just your basic build 351. Keep in mind, this is destined for a 62 Galaxy, so a vehicle that is literally tons of fun. And for me, the most important thing was torque. I wanted to be able to put my foot into the accelerator and have it set me back in my seat. That was the goal. Don't plan on taking it much above 5,500 RPMs. And at the time, 
The plan was to use the original roller truck camshaft that came in that motor. And that's this camshaft right here. Now, there is nothing wrong with the truck camshafts. They are built to idle really smooth. They work extremely well with fuel injection. They work well with carburetors. The only problem with this camshaft is you get above 4,000 RPM and that curve really starts to drop off. It's not performing as well above the 4,000 RPM range. Now, again, when it was just going to be a warmed up 351, that was going to be perfect for the, my 62 Galaxy. Then I was basically given another roller 351 Windsor. And that started me down the rabbit hole that is this build, where I'm stroking it out to a 393 because ultimately a 390 is what I wanted from the car from the day I bought it. The problem that I have is sometimes I will get an idea in my head and I stick to it. I don't think about other things and how they've changed. And so for the longest time, even with the 393, I was still going to run this truck cam. But as the process of this build has gone along and I've thought about where I'm using it and, you know, how it's going to function, I've begun to rethink that. I, I really don't need all that stump pulling low end grunt that this is going to have because I've increased the size of this motor by 42 cubic inches. I've added the extra torque that this would have given the warmed over 351 just by increasing displacement. So at that point, I have the freedom to get something that is going to run just a little bit higher, go to a little higher RPM, and be a slightly smoother curve that doesn't just die off at 4,000 RPM. Not getting any help from the cam manufacturers and getting so many conflicting ideas and preferences from people on various forums and groups I just decided to start in on camshafts at Summit Racing. They have great tools where you can put in RPM range, you can put in different factors, firing order, all the different small block forward things that you would specifically like. And I came up with a camshaft that I thought was going to be absolutely perfect for this build. Spoiler alert, this is knit. The camshaft that I picked was made by Howard's. And the problem is, it is a smaller base circle. It is a retrofit camshaft, the one that I wanted. And you really shouldn't run a retrofit camshaft on a block that doesn't need to be retrofitted. Basically, what is happening is the lobes are a little bit smaller. They still have the same amount of lift and the same overall shape, but they are a little bit smaller to allow the retrofit lifters to go a little deeper into the bore. Using a camshaft like that is really hard on the valve train if you're using stock lifters. So a retrofit camshaft is not really a good option. One of the pieces of advice that I got from multiple people is just call the manufacturer because oftentimes they can do a custom grind for the same price or less than what's sitting on the shelf or they'll have something that is not in their catalog that is, again, sitting on the shelf waiting to be sold. So I called up Howard's Cam, and I told him the camshaft that I was looking at, but I wanted the OEM base circle, not a retrofit cam. And they're like, we can do that. We can get you that camshaft in two to three months. And I said, well, what's the problem? And they said, well, we are out of cast steel cores. We have forged steel cores, and we could make a camshaft for you out of that. But we are so backlogged that that grind would probably take at least six weeks. And it's going to cost you $100 to $150 more. So weighing my options, thinking about what I wanted to do, I said, okay, if I go with the cast steel blank and have you grind it, we're looking at two months. I asked a few more questions. We talked about various things. And then... I said, well, because it's cast steel and not forged steel, I still need to use a steel distributor gear, correct? And he said, no. He said that is one of the biggest internet myths and all of his cast steel camshafts are fine running the cast iron gear. My mind was blown. 
I took that information and made a post on my favorite Mustang forum. And turns out that the rule that you must always use a steel distributor gear on a roller camshaft is in fact a myth. Now here's the thing. More often than not, you do need a steel distributor gear with a roller camshaft. The only way to know for certain is to contact the manufacturer. So make sure if you're running a roller camshaft that you contact the manufacturer because some are set up with a hardened steel that you need to run the steel distributor gear. And some are made from cast steel, still hardened, but you're fine running the cast iron gear. So just gonna throw that out there that the rule that you must run a steel gear on a roller camshaft, myth, busted. You don't believe me? Call Howard's camshaft. The rule that you should always check with the manufacturer, cold, hard fact. Rather than waiting for Howard's to get stuff in stock, because I knew that once they get the blanks in stock, I'm still going to have to wait for them to cut them, I went back to Summit Racing, and I started looking for camshafts with similar attributes to the Howard's cam that I was looking at. And I found this beauty right here. This is a trick flow camshaft. This is designed to go in small block Fords, specifically performance-oriented uh, Mustang, that kind of thing, work with EFI, and have minimal tuning. So it is closer to an OEM-style camshaft, close enough that you can make the OEM computer work without flashing, but still a whole lot more performance, especially on the higher end, than this truck camshaft. So that begs the question, how did I decide what specs were important? How did I wade through all the different options? And how did I settle on this camshaft? <laughs> Well, you've sat here and watched me prattle on for well over 10 minutes. And there's so much more information to cover on camshafts and why I picked the one that I did and how I picked the one that I did that this video is rapidly approaching too long. So we're going to stop this video right here. Never fear, however, because you're not going to have to wait for months for the next installment on camshafts like you had to wait for this video. It's been at least two months since I put up a video on my 393 build. I'm going to cut the video that I have in half. I put up videos once a week, so you will get part two of this video next week. If you like what you've seen, please click like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.